Welcome to the Aviation Insurance Podcast, the podcast that helps aircraft owners and aviation businesses learn and understand the complex world of aviation insurance and risk management. From the basic principles of aviation insurance to risk management techniques and updates on the aviation insurance market, the Aviation Insurance Podcast is your guide to traverse the world of aviation insurance. Now, here's your host, Tim Bonnell. Well, welcome to the Aviation Insurance Podcast, where we've been learning about the fundamentals of aircraft and aviation insurance. In these recent episodes, we've been talking about the Aviation Commercial General Liability, or CGL for short, and we've been looking deep into the insuring agreements. We've learned that the policy form uh, is similar to the aircraft insurance policy with declarations, uh, insuring agreements, conditions, exclusions, and then things like definitions and endorsements. So DICE is that acronym we use to know where we're looking in a policy. We've looked at coverage A, B, C, and D. And in our most recent episode, we kind of introduced coverage D, hangar keepers, legal liability. And we talked about that um, applying to non-owned or non-leased aircraft and the insured's care or custody or control. They, they uh, happen to damage an aircraft. Now, uh, hangar keepers, again, the word hangar is often a confusing one, but just go with the definition we've talked about in general uh, for the concept uh, occur very often. It's the most frequent, probably uh, aviation CGL loss. Uh, Again, all kinds of things from hangar damage to um, that, you know, aircraft uh, being unchalked or whatever. In fact, I'd say, yeah, um, failure to put in chocks, use wing walkers, uh, not disconnecting APUs, using wrong tow bars or, or tugs, getting too close to fences, uh, while marshalling or towing aircraft or uh, frequently mobile equipment gone wild, uh, whether that's uh, fuel trucks or or different uh, service vehicles like carts, uh, hangar keepers legal liability happens frequently. I remember uh, one carrier telling us in the early 2000s uh, that their loss ratio was 300% on hangar keepers claims. And so they were really wanting to see an increase in training and so the uh, NATA Safety First program back then was a big coverage, uh, our big uh, training uh, service that they uh, very much promoted. But uh, towing, ramp movement losses, ground service equipment, and hangar movements account for the majority of these hangar keeper legal liability claims. Now, uh, something that I really, the reason I wanted to do a part two of coverage D is because um there are, um, this is a liability coverage. There are multiple uh, facets to what a loss could be. So uh, let's say there's a hangar rash. We've, we've ding, dinged a wing while moving an aircraft. We'll just say one, because a lot of times there's one aircraft being run into another. So you actually have the direct repair estimate that, you know, hey, we, we damaged it. It's a, for the terms of easy math, a $500 loss. Well, unfortunately, that's not the end of a liability claim when it comes to hangar keepers. There are the what's called consequential or uh, indirect damages. So there's trip continuation for that operator who can no longer use that aircraft. There are uh, maybe a ferry flight to a maintenance facilities, uh, a temporary replacement aircraft that costs more to operate uh, a similar aircraft while chartering it costs more to operate than their own aircraft. Um, you know, time dealing with the situation. But then there's also things like diminution of value claims, uh, lo- lo- you know, loss of use. Then, and then there's, you know, intangibles like, you know, loss of goodwill or trust or reputation, uh, maybe future business opportunities. We've had insureds that have had enough losses with a customer to where that customer no longer would do business with them. And then you know, obviously you have a couple of these hangar keepers losses. Obviously, the insurance rates will be affected due to the fact that it is a trend. It is a frequency and severity evaluation that looks to be more frequent than it should be. So you take a direct loss, the damage to repair, you can actually go considerably higher with those indirect portions of the losses, those uh, ongoing, you know, handling of the claim with the continuation, the time dealing with it, the the diminution of value, the loss of use, all those type of consequential losses can actually increase uh, that uh, hangar keeper's rash a hundredfold and then some. So, that's why uh, thinking about the hangar keepers legal liability coverage, we don't want to just think about the value of the aircraft uh, that we're working on, but also the other potential uh, inconsequential losses. And so it's amazing uh, with any liability coverage uh, when there's property damage to someone else's aircraft, 
whether that's care custody control or just a liability situation, those consequential losses get very expensive and aren't often a consideration for people. So keep in mind the direct and indirect or the consequential losses for hangar keepers legal liability. This is a very frequent um, uh, uh, source of claims for aviation insurers who provide aviation CGO coverages or the aircraft policies where this kind of coverage may be extended. Uh, corporate operators who will have a uh, maybe a vendor's aircraft stored inside of their hangar. Here, that's another um, uh, potential situation there. So, hangar keeper legal liability. Make sure you know what it is. Go back to the last episode. Make sure you consider not only those direct potential losses, but the indirect potential losses because they happen frequently, even to the best of operators. And again, training and uh, you know using all the different safety tools uh, can help to mitigate those losses improve your um, your lost record and, and your sitting with the aviation insurance carrier. So that's Hanger Keepers Legal Liability Part 2, and that's all for this episode. So until next time, we hope that you enjoy clear skies and unlimited visibility. Thanks for listening to the Aviation Insurance Podcast. If you found this episode of value, please share it with someone who would benefit from this information. Don't forget to subscribe in your podcast player so you don't miss any new episodes and to help our show have more impact. This episode is brought to you by Eris Insurance Solutions, your flight plan for navigating the turbulence of aviation insurance. For more information, visit erisinsurance.com. That is www.aerisinsurance.com. Disclaimer. These episodes are for educational purposes only, and due to the changing regulatory and legal nature of the business, some information may change over time. Having a well-educated and experienced aviation insurance broker on your team is an absolute requirement to success in business and for managing your aircraft and aviation business risks.